Hello students, welcome to my class once again. Today, I am going to discuss a new chapter, chapter number 17, page number 99 in your book. That is, the name of the chapter is the British Raj and the Revolt of 1857. It means from history. Today, we are going to know about the Revolt of 1857 and the British Raj. We all know about British Raj. In this chapter, we are going to know a bit specifically. So, though it, this chapter is a bit larger than the other, so without wasting time, let's start the chapter. See, in the past, India was a rich and wealthy and prosperous country. Our contact with the outside world date back to many centuries before Christ. The Romans, Greeks and the Arabs had been coming to buy our goods. In the past, it means centuries before, our country was a very wealthy country, understood, full of natural resources and our contact with the outsiders date back uh, before the Christ. Understood. Many countries came in India for different purposes, for especially for trade purposes. Who are they? Romans, Greeks, Arabs had been come to buy our goods. Now, especially what kind of goods? See, cotton and silk, silk textiles, handcrafts and spices like paper and cadmo were in a great demand that period of a time. Understood? Now, with the rapid growth of a civilization, demand of those goods increased greatly in the West. The rapid growth of a civilization, demand of such goods like cotton, silk, textile, handcrafts, spices were increased in the West. Understood what I said? The Portuguese and at the meantime, what happened? The Portuguese and the Spanish sailor started a series of geographical discovery. Understood? The Portuguese and the Spanish sailor started a series of geographical discovery. They found new, new places. For example, Columbus discovered America in AD 1498. Remember, for the first time, Columbus Columbus discovered America in AD 1494. Understood? And the similarly, the Portuguese sailor Vasco da Gama discovered the new sea roads to India via Cape of Cold Hope in the year 1498. For the first time, Portuguese sailor Columbus discovered, sorry, Vasco da Gama discovered the new sea roads of India via who? Cape of Gold Hope Roads in the year 1498. It means what? 1498 for the first time Portuguese came to India. Understood what I say? Okay. He landed in India at Calicut, Kerala, a state well known for its spices. He landed his foot for the first time where? Calicut in Kerala. And Kerala is well known for its spices. Understood? different kinds of uh, spices. So, now you see, it is said that Vasco da Gama <coughs> returned to Portugal with the cargo of a ship, uh, spices, with the cargo of spices that fished him 50 times the cost of his bogey of India. It is said that the, when Vasco da Gama returned back to his homeland, at that time, he carried a cargo of a spices and this spice he sell his own country and earned 50 times more than the cost what he spent for traveling from his own country to our country for his. It means, can you imagine how much profit he earned by selling only the one huh, cargo of a spice. Now, you see. They established a trading center at Calicut, Cochin and huh, Kanmore. They established their different trade center in India. And then onwards, they, start, they started trade with India. 
understood and they established many trade center in india understood what i say where kalikut cochin etc now that very particular places they established their trade center now the portuguese fought with arabs traders and defeat them the portuguese uh, before portuguese arabs was there they fought with arabs and defeat them and then on uh, they occupy the indian they occupied the indian market and they established their trade center in many places uh, like kalikut cochin etc as i said understood and then on wars after defeated the arabs then on wars they control the entire foreign trade of india in the 16th century in the 16th century after defeated the arabs they control the entire huh, entire market indian market understood what i said now the empire the belt could not last longer but unfortunately the empire what the belt it could not last longer understood why could not last longer let's see what is the reason behind the traders were cruel and unfaith towards the indians the reason behind what the traders were was very cruel they are not free and also unfair with indians understood because they always wants profit they tortured the indians especially the indian merchants indian farmers understood what i said they are very cruel to indians understood now the <coughs> the the traders were cruel and unfair towards the indians the portuguese became very rich other european countries like holland france and britain also developed interest in trade of indian goods though they were cruel but they were very rich and wealthy that period of time because by doing the trade with indians understood because they plotted the indians understood they extract money from the indians so that is why they were rich that time and at the meantime some other foreign countries like holland france and britain also developed interest huh, developed interest in trade of indian goods they were also interested to do trade with the indian goods also then after what happened you see they came to india and fought among themselves then they came to india now there was a no monopoly huh. earlier we saw that arabs was there then arab was defeated by whom defeated by by the portuguese and then what happened many other foreigners came like holland france britain and though there was a no monopoly market and they start fought among they start fought among themselves understood to occupy the indian market after that what happened you see the british defeated other european countries and became the sole traders and lastly british came and lastly the british came and what happened they defeated rest all other foreigners understood and became the sole traders and then onwards the british raj started in india how gradually starts let me explain now some british traders formed a company to trade with india when the british came and for the first time their intention was to trade only understood how gradually it became to uh, how gradually they occupied the indian political power i will tell you now listen some rich british traders formed a company to trade with india it was named the east india company that company what they established for the first time the name of this company was what the east india company okay now the company was given the exclusive right to the trade in the east by the queen elizabeth and the company got the opportunity or got right from their queen elizabeth the queen elizabeth permitted this company to do trade with who whom with indian market or with indians now what happened see though the company was interested in earning profit through trade it found it necessary to establish permanent permanent center with a big godowns to store the goods do the company show the trade the company wants to trade with indians so that is why they wants their permanent residence and godowns for their goods understood then what happened see the godown was called factory in those days in those days godown was called what factory it means the company wants to establish their factory in many places in india because they wants to trade with india understood what i said the company wanted to establish a many trade center they wanted to establish many trade center in india after that what happened see 
the company established its first factory at Surat on the west coast of India in 1608. For the first time, then company established their trade center in India in 1608 at Surat. Understood what I said? At Surat in the year 1608, for the first time, they established their first trade center. Okay. And who gave the permission to establish? See, the Mughal Emperor Jahangir permitted the company to establish factory in the whole of the Mughal Emperor. At that time, the Mughal Emperor was there. And Mughal King Jahangir gave the permission to British to establish their factory at India, uh, established their factory in many places in India. Understood what I said? And as a result, from Sora to many other places, they established their factory in India for trade purposes. Understood? Now you see, the company added Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai uh, as important trade center. And then on, the company established some other trade center in India, namely Chennai, Kolkata and Mumbai, those places they established their trade center. Understood what I said after getting the permission of whom? By Jahangir. To protect their for to protect their factories, the British built fort and maintained armies. And then on what? Though they established their factories, so to protect their factories, they what what they started? They what maintained force. Understood? They uh, protect their factories. The British built forts and maintained armies. They built forts and maintained armies also. Understood what I said? Now, the offices of uh, residences of offices and the residences of the employees were situated in this area. And they also started uh, to build the offices and the residences of the employees were also established and built in those areas. Understood? Now, after that, what happened? You see, the British came to India for a trade, but became conquerors. The British, for the first time, came to India for a trade. And it is in this way, gradually, slowly, 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 eh, they start occupying eh, many powers. How? You see. Shirajudullah became the Nawab of Bengal in AG 1756. In the year 1756, Shirajudullah became the Nawab of Bengal. He did not like the British trade, build, British traders building forts and maintaining their armies. But he did not like, he did not like that the British uh, built, building the forts and the maintaining the armies. Though that is why what happened? He ordered the British to remove their gun from their fort at Kolkata. That is why he did not like it uh, to maintain the forts because he realized that danger that uh, he realized the intention of a British. That is why then and there he ordered the British to remove their gun from the fort at Kolkata. But what happened, you see, the company refused to follow the order of the Nawab, but company refused to follow the order of the Nawab. Then what happened? This led to the Battle of Polasi in the year 1757. Though, though deny the order of the British, sorry, order of the Nabab. So as a result, what happened? This led to the Battle of Polasi in the year 1757. About to Battle of Polasi. I will tell you some other days when the school will reopen. Huh, so many things to know about Battle of Polasi. Okay. So. Because in this battle, uh, Shirajudullah was defeated by the British. How he defeated, uh, I will tell you later. Okay, now come to the topic. In which Shirajudullah was defeated. In this battle of Polasi in the year 15, sorry, 1757, Shirajudullah was defeated by whom? By the British. How he defeated? Uh, I will tell you later. Okay. Now come to the topic. This victory paved the way of British Ministry of Bengal and Ministry of Bengal and ultimately help them in controlling the entire country. And with this victory of with this victory, the British occupied the political power. 
uh, then and what they start ruled the bengal and after that one after another one after another gradually they start occupying the started they started occupying the political power understood now you see the company now became the military power then and what the company became the military power they start rule they start they start ruling this then onwards after defeating the sirajuddullah understood what i said now the british did not conquer the whole of india at once the british did not conquer the whole india at once but the gradually gradually technically with their conspiracy mind understood what i said how see the king and the nawab of small kingdoms in india were fight among themselves they keep the fuel of huh, hatred among the kings and nobles and and with their divide and rule policy uh, uh, applied and kings and nobles who were ruled at that time huh, they fought among themselves understood what i said and what happened then give the opportunity to enter and uh, give the opportunity to uh, to enter with this fought and occupied their land in different way how you see the british freely used the divide and rule policy to capture their kingdom understood what i said with the help of of a better trained and what disciplined army they captured a large part of india with their better trained and well armed and disciplined army they occupy slowly 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 one part after then another then another it is in this way they occupied a whole country we can say understood what i said and it is in this way the british occupied the whole india great understood what i said is now the indian farmers were tipped by nature they were under the influence of uh, priests mullahs landlords and money lenders indian uh, what happened the indian farmers were tipped with the nature they were afraid of nature and also they were uh, uh, controlled by the uh, priests, uh, what priests mullahs landlords and money lenders etc they were the uh, worst affected and that is why they were worst affected at that period of a time as a result what happened you see in the later 18th century the british merchants huh, introduced cultivation of indigo another thing happened at that time what happened see in the later 18th century the british merchants british uh, huh, merchants what introduced indigo cultivation in india and now what is indigo cultivation see a blue powder used in england for a dyeing milk cloths a color a kind of you can say that a kind of a color what they used in the where cloth mill industries understood so that things the british merchant start cultivated in indigo which is called uh, in india which is called indigo in bengal as a result what happened it gradually spreaded all over the bihar also it starts with the bengal and it gradually all over the bihar also the, that particular indigo cultivated cultivation started the farmers had no use for this crops so, but actually indian farmers have use of this no what the indian far farmers need at that time they need rice wheat and other vegetables what is essential for survival is not it but indigo the indian farmer has no use of indigo but they were forced to cultivate understood what i said they were forced by the british to cultivate indigo instead of rice wheat etc now you see they were forced to sell it at a very low price and though they forced to cultivate and also at the same time they were forced to sell their uh, this indigo with a very low price to whom to the british once again understood what i said this led to the helpless cultivators uh, to what began with the starvation while the company earned the huge profit and this led to the starvation among the cultivators among the farmers understood what i said but on the other hand the british east india company became a more huh, powerful and earned the huge profit understood what i said now you see similarly the weavers of the cotton and the silk cloths were also forced to sell their products 
only to the British at a very low price. And similarly, the weavers and the silk cottons industries were also forced to sell their goods only to whom? British, not to Indians. Understood what I say? <laughs> the Indian farmers and traders were unhappy with the British and that is why Indian traders and farmers were unhappy with the British. Okay, slowly the Indian industries and crafts were forced to close down and it is in this way slowly slowly Indian industries and crafts were slowly slowly what happened closed down because less number of buyers and they were only they were uh, ordered only to sell their goods to whom to the British not to Indians understood that is why their companies and industries and industries slowly slowly closed down India who was converted into a rich source of raw material for the industries in Britain. Then what happened? India was converted into a rich source of raw materials for the industries in Britain. It means what? Uh, in British brought on so raw materials from India to their own country and produced different goods. And once again, these goods they sent to India, sent to India and sell in the Indian market. Understood? It is in this way, both ways, they earned the huge profit from whom? From the Indians. Understood what I said? The Indians were made to buy British clothes at a high prices. Indian, Indians were forced to buy the British goods with a huge price, with a high price. Understood what I said? The British made India a consumer of British goods and rich supplier of raw materials and it is in this way the British made India a consumer of a British goods and rich supplier of a raw materials. So it is in this way both way the Indians understood the plotted Indians and they ruined the Indian economies. Understood what I said? Okay now the company officials started sending immense wealth home. They extort money from the Indian rulers, merchants, landlords, and even the common people added to this were the huge profit made from trade. And it is in this way the company officials started sending immense, immense wealth, the, the huge amount of wealth to their own country. They extorted money uh, through taxes from the heads of Indian rulers, merchants, landlords, eh? even the common people also. Uh, added to all this, they are the huge profit made from the trade with the Indian. Understood what I said? All this made the Indian king, nawabs, farmers, whoever, traders and other unhappy with the British and their Raj. And all these circumstances made uh, Indian kings, nawabs, farmers who hey, were unhappy with this. Understood? As a result, what happened? People from all walk of life started planning to host the British from the, our country. And as a result, what happened? There was a dissatisfaction grows among the Indians. And they want to uh, throw the British. They wanted to throw the British from India. Understood what I said? So though they started planning. Then on us. As a result, what happened? See, but these people were not united enough to change the British rule. But... Unfortunately, at that time, those people, those who wants to throw the British from India, they were not united among themselves. Understood? That is why they are unable to do it. That is why they didn't, uh, what happened? Enough to change the British rule. That is why they were failed to change the British rule that period of a time. Understood what I said? Now, the time to know about the revolt of 1857. See. The year 1857, it is an important year in the history of our country. Why this year is an important year in the history of Indian, history of our country? See, it was the time when, when an attempt was made by the Indians to liberate themselves for the British rule. It was for the time, it was the year when for the first time India, Indians rose their boys against the... Huh, cruel British. Understood what I, what I said? That is why this year was a very well known in the Indian history. Understood? Some scholars called it Sipai Mutiny while others described it as the first war of the independence. Some scholars, some writers 
some historians uh, determined this this one is a sipahi mutiny while other said what what other described it was the first war of the independent it was the first war of the independence now you see now let's see how it was started see mongol pante a young sipahi fired the first shot of the revolt fired the first shot of the revolt by whom the mongol pande understood the bullet of fired on march 29 in the year 1857 it was started by the mongol pande uh, march 29 1857 remember that day understood what i said the army revolt against the 100 years old british rule and that time british already ruled 100 years so for the after 100 years for the first time uh, officially the revolt was started by the mongol pande 29th march 1857 understood what i said the first spread of revolt started at mirat near delhi it was started near delhi place mirat understood the revolt spread over a large part of northern and central india and then in there this revolt was spread in a large part of the northern india and the central india also understood what i said so what is the main root reason behind the revolt of 1857 this things is not mentioned here in your book but i'll tell you about uh, you need to remember uh, you just remember this when school will reopen i'll tell you the root causes of the uh, revolt of 18 57 if i if i am going to discuss here then your video will be a long one so that is why i'll tell you about 1857 you just note down it and i'll tell you about right after the school will reopen okay now come to the topic see after that what happened the last mughal emperor bahadur shah zafar was made the leader and then after what leadership of revolt of 1857 goes to the bahadur shah zafar he took the leadership he was the last king of the mughal emperor understood other sections of the indian society also joined in this in the struggle and some other section of the society also joined with this struggle you can say that many people from the different field also joined this joined this struggle struggle means this revolt of 1857 nana among them nana saheb dante topi kanwar singh liaquat ali rani lakshmi bai of jamsi and begum begum hazrat mola ha huh, they were well known face understood they were prominent leader who run this revolt at that period of a time understood what i said they were the prominent among them okay now the sacrifice of rani of jamsi is well known about rani jamsi bai so many movies also serials also so many books also written ha her her what sacrifice for her motherland is very well known i will also tell you one story about rani jamsi bai when school will be open okay you just remember me okay you just sorry remind me once now <coughs> the revolt shocked shocked the foundation of the company rule in india this revolt shocked the shattered the foundation of the foundation of the company rule in india how you see the indians who had but what happened but then also what happened you see the indians who had many leaders who were not well organized but british with a well organized army spread the revolt with a heavy hand do the indians started the revolt but indians had a lack of leaders a lo- ha, less number of leaders with a well, with not well organized but british with a well organized army that is why they can suppress this revolt with a heavy hand within a short time they were able to suppress this revolt within a short period of time because indians were less well organized leaders understood what i say after that what happened you see thousands of people were taken into custody and killed thousands of people were taken into custody taken to jail and they were giving the death sentence they were killed understood what i say bahadur shah zafar was sent to rangon uh, rangon in burma presently myanmar bahadur shah was sent to rangon and presently in myanmar 
and what happened see hundreds of people were tied with the mouths of cannons and blow up hundreds of people uh, were tied with the cannons cannons you know the big big uh, weapons uh, uh, for war understood uh, would the hundreds of people they were tied with these cannons and blow up understood it is in this way the british killed the indians that that period of time those who were involved with this revolt understood what i say now what happened many villages were burnt down many villages burnt down by the british thousands of thousands people were killed by the british okay the people of india had a suffer a great what cruelties of the british and because of this revolt the people of india suffered a lot suffered a great cruelties huh, of british and then on british after this revolt british became more cruel to indians understood what i say now you see have a look once your books page number 102 here pictures given Mongol Pandey, Nana Sahib, Tanti, Atupi, Rani, Lakshmi, by their pictures also given, sketch pictures given, you can see, understood. Now, you see, the revolt of 1857 brought an end to the rule of the East India Company. It is, though one way it is failure, another way also, uh, you can say that success, side of success. What happened, see? The revolt of 1857 brought the end of the rule of the East India Company. Before 1857, East India Company ruled the India, but right after the revolt, what happened? The political power goes to the British government directly. It means then onwards the India was governed by the Viceroy, which is appointed by the British Queen from the directly from the Britain, not from the East India Company. Understood? It was taken over by the British government. Understood what I say? It appointed a Governor General, also called Viceroy, that period of a time, and then on after the after the revolt what happened the political power goes to the from a company to the british government and they from the body here they send the viceroy to uh, for different provinces of india they send the viceroy to india and this viceroy they ruled they form the body in india and they ruled india understood what is not directly by the company then onwards understood this was the political changes happened after the 1857 now now india came more family or familiar under the british but still the conditions of a people did not improve though the political power goes to the british and british were a bit familiar to uh, indians but then also the condition of people uh, did not improve because then on what they imposed more and more taxes to indians not only they impose tax but also year after year or decades after decades or they increase this tax understood increase the tax whereas on the other hand the crop failure because of natural disasters farmers were unable to pay the taxes as a result what happened they lose the land so that is why the improve the condition of the people did not improve that period of a time understood what i said now the new rules also harassed and suppressed the indians the whatever new rules the british made right after the 1857 this also not too much familiar too much satisfactory for to whom to the indians this new rules also harassed a lot to indians and suppressed the indians also understood it means the struggle was continued uh, understood so however you see however the revolt of 1857 created an arch in the mind of the indian people to unite and fight for their freedom however though this revolt of 1857 is a failure one but it created the arch create the arch in the minds of the indian people to unite eh, and fight for the freedom as a result many movement eh, broke out eh, after 1857 because of this because it was the first step and people realized it is only possible to uh, throw british from our country eh, it is only possible when we all unite together and fight eh, together fight together understood what i said that 
thinking was created among the minds of the Indian people after the 1857. Understood? And as a result, we saw that series of revolts took place right after the 1857. It's not it. Yes. They prepared for a new struggle against the British rules. And as a result, they launched many, uh, they launched many revolts also after 1857. It's not it. Yes. Okay. So this all about the <clears throat> British Raj and revolt of 1857. These are very few things. Understood? So many things is there hmm, to discuss. But in, in your chapter, very few, few things, very basic things is given. If I will get time, I will explain once again, uh, elaborately, deeply about the revolt of 1857, about the root cause of the revolt of 1857 and British Raj. British Raj is not a very few things which we can define or describe everything within our not possible because they ruled around 200, almost 200 years they ruled India. So how they came, how they start, how they ruled, understood how they bound to leave India in the year 1857, uh, who were the prominent leader to fought for the Indian freedom, hey, what is the, their important rule, uh, what is their important rule, understood? So everything, so many things we need to discuss, but very few things given in your chapter. So whatever is there, I already discussed. Then also, if you want to know something more, uh, you have my number, you can call me and ask me by the time. Or in this chapter also, if you have any problem to understand anything, you can call me by the time. Okay, so that's all for the chapter, the British Raj and the revolt of 1857. So that's all for today. Thank you so much. Thanks.